Well, here they come. It's time for the bronze in the compounds men's team event. Seat number six. Medal final. Representing France for the bronze medal final, please welcome Quentin Barrin, Pierre Julien Deloche, Sebastian Peno. Please welcome the other team contending for the bronze medal, Chinese Taipei. Representing Chinese Taipei, Xian Xian Xiong, Lin Xie Wei, Pan Yu Pen. Our World Archery Line judge for this match is Mr. Roy Cortez, as we're about to get underway. Archer, please prepare. French, shoot first. Chinese Taipei, you shoot second. Range clear. Well, Roy Cortez, the line judge, back out to officiate uh, this match between France and Chinese Taipei. France will shoot first. Quentin Barre, Pierre Julien Deloche, and Sebastian Pinal. Three arrows from them for the first end of the compound men's team a bronze a medal match. The French ranked number four in the world came through qualification ranked number two here in Salt Lake City. Bas droite, Quentin. Allez, PJ. Allez, il y a le temps, PJ. Holding on a little bit to that one. A 26 out of 30 for France to start the bronze medal match. And uh, we'll now have the first three arrows from Chinese Taipei, Chen Xiang Suan, Li Che Wei, and Pan Yu Ping. Well, three nines there, possible uh, measure on the first French arrow. If you're new to compound archery, there's three uh, athletes per team. They both shoot two arrows per end, and the idea across the six arrows is to score more points 
than your opponent. There are, of course, four ends, so you get four shots at it. But in fact, it's the overall score at the end, the accumulative score after all of those arrows that give you the final score. Both of these both of these teams are wanting to get off to a good start to establish a pace, get a lead early in the match. And uh, it's not it's not easy shooting in these windy conditions, like Steve Anderson said earlier. On a calm day, their sights will normally hold on the middle of the gold, but on a windy day like this, their sight picture could be all over the place. Yeah, so 54 out of a possible 60 for the French team could be marked up. You see the asterisk on the first nine. And it could be marked up to 55, but Chinese Taipei have a potential of 57 points here. See ya! The two tens is a great start for the second half for Chinese Taipei. 57 still on the cards. It's drifting out to the nine, but uh, even if that French first arrow is marked up to a ten, they are still going to lead by at least one. And uh, it's all about groupings here, Vic, and here we have a comparison between those first six arrows from both teams. Okay, I can see the Chinese Taipei are just a hair left, and they have a few arrows high, a few arrows low. Uh, France, their up and down's pretty good. They have some right and lefts that are probably overjudging or underjudging the wind. So that's crosswind at the, uh, nine, the second half nine, of the 50 uh, meter range here in ten, Salt Lake City. Nine, that's nine. exposed. They shoot from a, a line that's completely um, protected from the crosswind. But of course, they've got the headwind to contend with. That's right. These archers, most of these archers are shooting around the 60 pound maximum to help push through that wind on a windy day and to get less drift. But it's still a big factor of how the wind pushes on them as well. Well, the score is confirmed as a nine there for France in that first arrow. France, you shoot first. Taipei, shoot second. So Roy Cortez there confirming the scores and uh, France didn't get that extra point so they trail by two after the first end and they will shoot first in the second here at the third stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup bronze medal at stake here in Salt Lake. <laughs> Ouais, c'est pas loin, toujours un peu à droite. C'est la même que ta première, quasiment. Sur le tir, c'est bien. Ouais, bien joué, Quentin. Dis droite, Quentin. Allez, bien sur l'axe, PJ. Hein. Well, interesting there. My French isn't absolutely perfect, but I think you could hear either the coach or one of the athletes saying it is always pulling to the right. And then they corrected for the second arrow and perhaps overcorrected for the third, and it went left and dropped down a little bit. Three left! Yes!
these archers want to try to get their shots off fairly quick and smooth in these windy conditions. If they get caught holding a really long time, the shot quality can degrade, and then they want to let down, which can cause uh, a time crunch in the end. Held on for a while there, 120 seconds in total for each team to shoot the six arrows. Mark two in the ten there, they've corrected and a hop, skip and a jump there from Quentin Bearer. Trying to cross that line quickly to save time. Inside 10 seconds. Deloche looks calm. Just with uh, one second left on the clock, drops it into the eight, but a 55 out of a potential 60 Chinese Taipei's maximum here, if they shoot all tens, is going to be 57. Well, that one will go to a measure. Big chance to open the lead up further here. Led by two coming into the second end. Drifting out into the eight uh, on the uh, provisional scoring, uh, there is uh, their trail by a point, but we are going to have a measure. It's the one that's asterisk for Chinese Taipei. Ten, nine, eight. X, 10, 8. 10, 9, 8. 10, 10, 8. Well, it sounds to me like that one will get marked up. Target judge Jose Del Toro of Argentina calling the scores there at the target end of the range. And it has gone up to a 10. So despite dropping to an 8 in the uh, sixth arrow for Chinese Taipei, they drew that second end and still lead by two in the bronze medal match here in compound men's team archery. Range clear. France trailing, so they will go first, and the range is clear for the third end of the bronze medal match for the compound Allez, parti, les gars. men's event. Allez, Quentin. Solide, bien dans l'action. Ooh, we grabbed him a little bit on that one, I think. Allez, PG. Door open here, Vic, for uh, Chinese Taipei. 
chance to capitalize on a few points. Another nine there, so 27 place, potentially 24, because that eight could get marked up to a nine. It's the return of Quintanera, if they keep their order the same, and it is a rather complex process he goes through before shooting. Much better from the number two from France. This French archer is shooting a back tension release, so he doesn't actually have a trigger on it. He sets up and he just pulls, pulls, pulls until it automatically goes off once it's rotated a certain amount. So he doesn't know exactly when that thing's going to go off. It's going to stay very stable, but three nines for the French. And put a little bit of pressure on Chinese Taipei, but they have a big opportunity to grow their lead here. This archer had a thumb release. They try to shoot it the same way, but sometimes you will see them cheat a little bit in the wind. And when the, the sight's on the target, sometimes they'll just hit that trigger and try to send it down there. But even though that's not the preferred method. Good grouping there from Chinese Taipei. Uh, potentially a five point lead here, or an increase of five points in the third end on their lead, but uh, France will have a measure and that could be reduced to four. <laughs> <laughs> they are down at the target end, uh, doing the measure as we listen to the teams. You can hear the uh, target judge calling out the scores. <laughs> Third French arrow with the asterisk is a one that's uh, crucial in terms of whether it's uh, an extra four or five points for Chinese Taipei. Uh, it's been marked up to a nine, so it is four points. But Chinese Taipei have opened their lead up and lead by six now. Second. So France trailing will shoot first. <laughs> the final end of the compound men's team bronze medal match. You can see a little bit of swaying on him there when he was setting up the shot, but but I did notice after he took his thumb off, he was swaying around, but he was he was holding off to execute the shot until it settled. Right, uh, It didn't look wholly comfortable there, but I think there was a little bit of a sigh of relief there. The wind just picked up again as Brero was uh, releasing. His arrow.
7 en bas. Drifting down into the 7 there. Dropping 5 out of uh, the possible 30 points. Just all of a sudden at the target end of the range, the windsocks blowing around across and then towards the athletes. Very swirly. Yeah, you saw him kind of throw his bow on that one a little bit, trying to trying to compensate for his sight picture and the way the shot broke, I'm sure. Oh, good shooting there from Charlie Stuppe. The only thing that I can compare it to in my mind is a, is a golfer 100 yards out from a, a very small green uh, with the wind blowing and gusting all over the place, waiting to, to pull back to take their shot. Yeah, you know, in a qualification round with more time, they would try to time between the wind gusts, but in this team competition, they have no time to do it. They're forced to shoot. Of course, the green uh, on a golf course tends to be a little bit larger than 80 centimeters uh, from 50 meters. So a 2.14 for France. Chinese Taipei could draw level in two arrows here and effectively seal the deal with the third one. Dropping two, but they've got a big margin of error here, haven't they, Vic? They do. Even in these swirly conditions, you'd expect them to score 12 points over two arrows. As an underdog, I always love the, the, wind, the windy days like this because it creates more opportunity. Levels the playing field and just a hit required to win here for Chinese Taipei and take the bronze in Salt Lake. Oh, finishing in style there. A 10 to take the win and the bronze medal. 221 points to 214. It's Chinese Taipei who have beaten France in the bronze medal playoff.